शंकर केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवंतौनःश्वर गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्तु मेदिषा वह ओ शाति 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 Yeah, repeat after me. <clears throat> Vasudevendra Yogi Indram. Vasudevendra Yogi Indram. Natva Jnana Pradam Guru. Natva Jnana Pradam Guru. Mumukshunam Hitarthaya. Mumukshunam Hitarthaya. तत्वबोधो तत्वबोधो ओके सो देर आर टू रीडिंग्स हियर तत्वबोधो अभिधीयते is one reading tatva bodho vidhiyate so your attachment i think has that vidhiyate so both mean the same thing and both uh, both will work to satisfy the anushtup meter anushtup chanda so tatva bodho abhidiyate is what we traditionally chant uh, and many books use that okay <clears throat> so so last class we uh, started the text tatvabodha and we started with uh, the prayer that the author wrote traditionally any work is started with a prayer <clears throat> and we uh, we understood the purpose of a prayer like that where the uh, where the author tries to write starts with the prayer to one's guru or to brahmeshwara and also tries to say why or what is being written and now the author is going to tell a little more so we talked about uh, four aspects that are needed when any work is is done the four aspects are especially when in the works of shastra so what is the vishaya what is the subject matter <clears throat> and then what is the prayojanam what is the use what is the benefit iska matlab kya hai so we all want matlab you know we are all matlabi people which is fine we have to have matlab we have to ask the question 
what is the use of this? What is the use of studying Sanskrit, Jay Kumar Ji? Somebody asked me. So, yeah, good question. I think we should keep asking questions. That's the only way we can learn. So, Prayojanam. Then, Sambandha. Sambandha is a connection between the subject matter and the Prayojanam. Okay, you're telling me this is the benefit. So, tell me a little more. What is the connection? between the subject matter and the prayojanam. Suppose I study this. You are telling me I will get moksha. So explain to me what, how, how that is possible. So that is called sambandha. That is the third one. Then the last one is who is qualified? Who's, who is the right audience for this subject matter? So that is a perfectly valid question. So, I want to do a master's. I want to do a master's in uh, history. Master's in Indian history. So, bit of a dangerous topic because uh, if you want to do a master's in Indian history, you will end up reading, you will end up researching the European view of Indian history, which is not Indian history anymore. But Suppose I want to do, I want to do Indian way of Indian history. Then what are the prerequisites? Prerequisites. The minute you say prerequisite, you are talking about adhikaritvam. Talking about qualifications. Minimum some qualifications I must have. I must have a bachelor's degree. So minimum requirement. They look for it. Otherwise, you can't get a master's. Unless some child prodigy is there, etc. That's a different thing. So, this adhikaritvam is nothing but prerequisites. Any subject matter that is to be understood will have a prerequisite. No doubt about that. So, you want to do a PhD, you need a master's. You want to learn to drive a car, well, they won't ask for a degree. I don't think they ask for a degree. These days, I don't know how it is. But you must be some minimum age. So they, that's the prerequisite. You must be, in some countries, it will be 16. Some countries, it will be 19, whatever. So that's the prerequisite. So here also, Adhikaritva. So now, the author, she's going to talk about Adhikaritvam, she is going to explain a little bit about Adhikaritvam. So, let us uh, so chant after me. So, I have unmuted Kartik. <clears throat> Sadhana Chatushtaya Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampanna Adhikarinam Sampanna Adhikarinam Moksha sadhana bhutam. Moksha sadhana bhutam. Tattva viveka prakaram. Tattva viveka prakaram. Vakshya maha. Vakshya maha. So, this is, you can say, this is the first. Uh, First line of the text after the prayer. So he's now saying, he's starting to write. So here he's going to tell a little bit about the text and who is qualified. So let's understand that. Vakshya Maha. Vakshya Maha means uh, we will explain. We will present. We will talk about. We will talk about. So here he uses a plural here. Vakshya Maha. Vakshya Mi is singular. Vakshya Maha is plural. See in English it is not like that. I speak. We all speak. So the verb speak seems to have the same form. So in Sanskrit, it's not like that. Plural form will change. 
I spoke. Aham avadam. We all spoke. Avadama. So form changes. So that is why. That is why in Sanskrit words can there's no the order of words in a sentence is not important at all. It is left to the creativity of the author to put the words in any order. So therefore, as students, as people who study Sanskrit, we have to first look for the verb. You have to look for the verb. Wait a minute, there's a big sentence. Where is the verb? So that's a that's the way we approach it. In English, it won't be like that. Generally, you you know, after having dinner, I studied two verses of the Bhagavad Gita. So generally, the verb will not be at the end. Whereas here in Sanskrit, generally the word verb will be at the end, as in any other Indian language also. My ne, my Bhagavad Gita. First, Prathama Adhyay ko Padha. So, Padha becomes at the, comes at the end. So, same here also. Paksha, Maha comes right at the end. So, plural, he uses plural in it. So, here the scholars interpret that the author is relating to the Parampara, to the Guru Parampara. So, it's not the author who is presenting it. A, it has been presented by my Guruji. It has been presented long before that. And for eons, it has been presented. So we all present. Subject matter is not new. And what I'm going to say has been presented and that I will present again for you. That is what he's, he's saying. Vakshya, Maha. So Guru Parampara, identification with Guru Parampara. So when somebody says... Uh, I will talk. Then you will immediately ask what you will talk. What the question what arises. So that he is going to say next. He has said that in the previous word. Tattva viveka prakaram. Vakshama. Tattva viveka prakaram vakshama. So prakaram, prakaram means a methodology, a method of methodology is prakar, us prakar, like that in Hindi they say. So prakar means a methodology. So a methodology for what? Viveka prakaram. Viveka prakaram. So Viveka, the way we should understand this word is an inquiry, an inquiry that requires a discriminating look. It, so we call it discriminative inquiry. So if you look at any subject matter, Suppose somebody says, I want to, somebody talks about the black hole. So black hole. So I know nothing about black hole. I may have heard that phrase before black hole. And uh, people say black hole, black hole and all. So, so somebody, I met him and he's a physicist. So some topic came up and say, hey, what is black hole? So he tells me a lot of things. So he says black hole means it's a concept. It means that there is an entity which is so dense. It absorbs light. Light won't reflect from it. Like this, he gives a big list of things and he's trying to explain to me what black hole is. Now, I know nothing about black hole. So I can keep absorbing everything he says. I can keep learning. Same thing with any other subject also. 
whether it is mathematics physics whether it is zoology we all learned history of so many countries including india so we learned we did not know anything before we started absorbing a lot of material in our classes when i went to study black hole i was not confused about black hole i was not confused about any other subject mathematics but when you look at this topic when you look at certain topics like so the sun is revolving around the earth it is the experience for everybody for ages they say people believed that the sun revolved around the earth but somehow in our shastram it all they always say the sun has been in the center i don't know how they could figure that out <clears throat> so the sun has been revolving around the earth this is our experience not just one person's experience but the experience of the entire humanity and now somebody comes and says no this is not true so now the explanation has to be given because now there is a notion a wrong notion there is no need to say wrong notion because notion itself means wrong so i will just say notion we already are coming with a preconceived notion i already know that i already think i know that the sun is revolving around the earth so there is already some confusion i come in with some confusion and the and the person who wants to say something else has to has to demonstrate why that conclusion is wrong so a topic a subject where there is already a preconceived notion mix up where there is already a mix up deeply entrenched sometimes mix up deeply entrenched mix up so some people say modi ji is destroying the country now what can i do what can we all do we are all working so hard so many people are working hard in so many areas and after long time we got somebody who is taking the broomstick and demonstrating to the people that we have to keep our streets clean we have to there is something called cleanliness like this this man is telling telling us and some people are believing that he is destroying our country what to do so to to try to educate that person is not easy so mix up is there severe mix up so here also in this subject in this subject i have so many ideas about myself i am subject to frustration i am subject to vacillation i am subject to being decimated i am a mortal i am subject to disease Th this is what somebody explains ask me to explain who i am i have to say something about myself i am sad i am i am happy i am confused i am confused is also a, that's a true statement finally if i know that i am confused that is such a big revelation that is that itself is a big step that means god is being kind to me at least he made me see that i seem to be confused so i have so many conclusions about myself and the shastram is saying something entirely different shastram is saying there is no reason krishna is telling arjuna asochyan anvasochastvam asochyan anvasochastvam 
is saying this is the first verse in bhagavad gita where krishna starts teaching 11th verse second chapter that's where the teaching starts he says you are grieving for that which does not deserve grief this is a bold statement there is no real reason to grieve this is what the shastram is saying so this is just entirely opposite of what not just i have concluded the whole world you ask anybody on the street anybody are you a mortal yeah of course i am a mortal what what kind of question are you asking something wrong with you or what no no you are immortal if you go and tell somebody like that eh what will they say they will look at you a little bit no no we must study bhagavad gita it says you are immortal and they will say you know what's wrong with them why is he studying bhagavad gita he is only 40 30 years old he must be doing so many things this is this is the response you get so we all have had that experience so all this sideways they will look sideways and all so that shows how deeply entrenched the notion is so that kind of a mix up is there therefore the author is saying viveka prakaram so a normal enquiry in sanskrit the word is vichara vichar karo vicharam vicharam chayi vicharam vicharam means just enquire study investigate but here viveka prakaram something that you think you already know and it's so deeply entrenched and somehow the job of the teacher of the shastram is to make the person turn around completely so viveka prakaram that is why the author she is using that word viveka vivekam in this verse and when that when that teaching is going on when the teacher has explained why the why the sun why the earth is revolving around the sun the teacher must also explain what if the earth is revolving around the sun why do i feel as though the sun is revolving around the earth that also will have to be explained just because i know physics that's because i have i know about solar system just because i know about this planetary system system of nine planets and the sun in between i know the names of all planets i know the radii of all these orbits and i have so much data with me i can teach basic physics just because i have so much knowledge the perception doesn't change at all just because my knowledge is there i don't feel as though the earth is going around the sun no i don't have that feeling at all the sun continues to rise in the east continues to rise in the east and i tell my children the sun rises in the east and i appear to be lying to my children all of us sun where does the sun set boy the sun sets in the west and then we all proudly tell see my child my child so all that continues to remain the same even though i am a gnani with respect to the solar system solar system gnani has no power to change perception okay so the teaching has to explain this tatvam about this atma and from that teaching we also will understand why the perception is otherwise it will explain and but the perception doesn't change my knowledge it no longer has the perception doesn't see the knowledge doesn't have the ability to change the perception the perception doesn't have the ability to confuse me any more perception doesn't have the ability 
to confuse me anymore. So I can say after the teaching, I can say I am no longer confused. Okay. So Viveka Prakaram, Tattva Viveka Prakaram. Tattva Viveka Prakaram, we saw that before when we studied Tattva Bodha. The word Tattva, word Tattva Bodha, we studied that. So here the author is referring to the Tattvam, Atma Tattvam. So the question can be there. And the question was asked also in the satsang. Why do you? I'm, I want moksha. Why do you make me read a book? I don't even know Sanskrit. It's a big struggle. This Sanskrit is always a problem. Because everybody wants to, everybody loves Sanskrit. But there is always a starting problem. Like the tube light. Starting problem is always there. This seems to be a universal thing. And so you are asking me to study a book on top of that, all the Sanskrit words. And uh, moksha can't be this difficult. So these ideas can be there. Okay, nobody said moksha is difficult. Who said moksha is difficult? You are making that conclusion. See, this conclusion, we all these ideas we have. So, so the book means what? A teaching, something has to be clarified means it is written down. In the, it looks like a book and so we study it and those days uh, they never had books. I really don't know how they studied all these Upanishads. There is, there is uh, okay, there was some palm leaf manuscripts were there. But do you really think that, uh, you know, the 30 students in a Veda Patashala, they all had this palm leaf manuscripts? I really don't know. I don't know how this teaching came down. This power of Shruti, Shruti, the power of listening and repeating it. They must have had excellent memories. The entire Veda is memorized. I think that their lives must have been somewhat different. Not distracted by all these WhatsApp and this phone constantly murmuring. And so I think they had a different kind of lifestyle that enabled them to grasp whatever was heard much better than us. So, so, so the teaching, teaching happens. And whenever there is a matter to be understood, teaching has to happen. We saw that before. So now, what is the use of this, this, this Tattva Viveka Prakaram? What kind of Tattva Viveka Prakaram? There he says again in that verse, Moksha sadhana bhutam. Moksha sadhana bhutam. An inquiry, a means, an inquiry which is a means for moksha, which is a direct means for moksha. That is what he is saying here, moksha sadhana bhutam. So now all our uh, past classes of, of, of learning the introduction to Vedanta comes in handy. We talked about how knowledge takes place. At least two main things are needed. An object of knowledge, whatever I want to study is available. Prameyam, it's called Prameyam. And then to know anything, you must have what is called Pramanam. We studied these two. So when the Shastra Pramanam is there, and that which is to be appreciated, Atma is also there. When both of these things are there, the knowledge has to take place. Knowledge, Prama, has to take place when the pramanam and the object of knowledge 
are available like what like you are walking in the street and suddenly you close your nose oh you close your nose oh no oh this is too much so what happened so what happened suddenly i got a smell this horrible smell that you don't like and you close the nose what happened there the object of knowledge something which has a particular odor is available has been there on the street especially in india we have not figured out how to pick up garbage yet still garbage mountains of garbage are there in our streets and i hope i'm praying that some day we can at least we can at least know that we have to pick up garbage so wherever you go there are dogs and there is always smell so we have to do this all the time you know like pranayama in home we have to do pranayama outside also we have to close our nose for other reasons so <laughs> so what happened there there the the order was available and the pramanam my nose is also available i don't have a blocked nose my no cold nothing i am able to smell and you cannot but pick up the smell no force in the world can stop that from happening no force in the world is, can can stop that from happening no no i'm busy i'm busy volunteering for the elections indian elections are the biggest elections in the world so what no force can stop the smell from occurring okay that's the point we are trying to say so so like that even here that's why pramanam is so important when the shastram is there the the topic is there teaching is happening but somebody comes and says i don't follow i don't understand somebody might say uh swami ji i have been studying this for a long time but uh, i have no atma experience i don't understand etc he says so now what can we conclude from that we can say that something wrong with the subject matter what the shastra is saying is is wrong as possible or the pramanam there is some defect in the pramanam so two things right pramanam prameyam so some defect in one of these two can be there but we see so many people we see so many people who have gone through this this teaching this vedanta and they all vouch for it they all have given up their lives for it and even i have a conviction see even i have a conviction that this has to be true because we saw pariksha lokan having examined our experiences we know that that the way i'm seeking cannot cannot give me permanent adequacy so therefore the shastra must be correct so if pramanam is there and prameyam is there and if the knowledge is not happening there must be a third factor there must be a third factor that is required for this appreciation to happen okay so so somebody says uh, uh, look saturn T- tonight see you can see saturn that is saturn then i look what where is saturn that is saturn uh no i can't see saturn i can't see saturn no no 
you can't see Saturn with your eyes. Of course, you can't see Saturn with your eyes. You must use a telescope. So you use a telescope. Even a homemade telescope is enough to see Saturn and you can even see some rings around it. Then he sees it and he says, wow, all these years I have only drew pictures of this rings around Saturn and books where they write like this. Never seen it. Now I saw it. So suddenly it becomes real for us. So there you have to naked eyes not enough. So you have to augment the naked eyes. So all these things are needed. But here the third factor besides augmentation is is what the author is saying. Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampanadhikarina. Here the author is telling the preparedness that is needed for the student. So like preparedness is there and you tell a small child you tell a small child three years four years old you draw a triangle right triangle triangle because you know i am a mathematician my wife is a mathematician we are all descendants of mathematicians so i want my child to be a mathematician now hardly able to walk just stood up just two years old running around the house and you say boy vivek come here Look, this is a right angle with triangle. You know that says great properties. One important property. Hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs of the triangle. And this child, child smiles like this. Because the child is innocent. He, 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 he thinks this whole thing is funny. He, all new words. I don't understand any word. And so, father must be saying something. And it's all so funny and he smiles like this. And the father is upset. What? I am telling you a truth. This is Tattvam. Tattva Viveka we are studying. You are smiling at me? You don't have any respect for me. And the child runs away and picks up the ball and throws the ball at the father. So, what happened? Child is not prepared for this yet. Child is prepared for a lot of things, but not for this kind of mumbo-jumbo. All this right, this left and square and all this. Don't bring all this stuff here. Just play ball with me. I want you to play ball with me. That's all I want right now. So, not prepared. Child is not prepared. So, therefore, sadhana chatushtaya sampannam is what the author brings in. And so, roughly, how can you say this is what kind of preparedness should be there for this kind of a person? We have to just think a little bit. Not difficult. The person has to be uh, mature. Mature means what? Mature is a very general word. We are not talking about physical maturity. Somebody who doesn't react to situations. Somebody who thinks twice before talking. Somebody who isn't rash. Somebody who is compassionate. Somebody who is able to think logically. Somebody who is not threatened by facts. All these things we can bring about when you say maturity. Somebody who is objective. Objective means, I like the word objective because objective means I give the benefit of doubt to the object. See, that is really what objective means. So we talked about Vastu Tantram, remember. Vastu Tantram means what this object is, is decided by this object, not by me. 
I can't decide what this object is. So I have to be objective. So when it comes to this pen, I'm very objective. I say you, this is a pen, you are a pen, you are a red colored pen, <coughs> you are a ballpoint pen. All this I'm saying, I'm objective. So there are areas where we can become subjective. <coughs> subjective. So subjective, when, we come, when it comes to people, relationships and so forth, we can become very subjective. So a person who is more objective, relatively very objective, is something we are looking for here. So that is, that we all understand, I think. And that maturity cannot be physical maturity because we have seen in our life Young people, mature young people are there. Immature old people we have seen. So therefore, this age is very obvious. Age is not something, the Shastram doesn't talk about age anywhere at all. I've looked at so many things. The Shastram just, Ayu just doesn't mention. Other than Dirga, you, may you live long. That is the only time they talk about age. May you have, may you live for a long time. Shatayuf Purusha, may you live long. That is the only place where this they talk about age so much. But otherwise, for jnanam, the age is not mentioned. So therefore, we the sadhana chatushtaya sampanna, which the author is going to explain in the next verse. Chatushtaya Sampanna. So, a, a fourfold wealth, fourfold qualifications is the literal meaning of that, which he himself, she herself is going to explain what that is. And so, the reason for bringing Sadhana Chatushtaya here is not to make a judgment. Hey, you are not qualified for this. Come back later. Judgment. No. Not, not for that kind of a judgment. It helps me prepare myself. Somebody says, I want to do a PhD. And he says, do you have a bachelor's degree? No. That means what? That doesn't mean this, the judgment is being made. No, no. There is no room for judgment here. It means, hey, you must have at least a bachelor's degree to do a PhD. We will ask for it. You must show a piece of paper that says you have a bachelor's degree. So that then I have to go on. My question should now be, how do I get a bachelor's degree? That must be my question. So therefore, the first reason for talking about sadhana chatushtayam will be to help me prepare myself. Prepare myself. Yes, I am interested in moksha. I know there is something in it. And I want to master it. What should I do? Sadhana Chatushtaya Samtati. I must have. Second reason is to, you can say, to protect the Shastram. To protect the Shastram. See how beautiful it is. Why Shastram needs protection? People say Vedas will protect itself. Yeah, Vedas will protect itself. That's okay. That's a different context. But here, such a subtle topic, such an important topic, so easy to dismiss. Hey, what is all this nonsense? I am the whole. Hey, you can never be the whole. This is how life is. Just accept it. Take it or leave it. So, so easy to dismiss. So, therefore, the Shastram, the, 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 the subject matter of the Shastram has to be protected. So, to, the way to protect it is to say, hey, to appreciate this, you must need a certain other qualification and let's all lead a life which will help me gain those qualifications, which will help me mature myself. What qualification? In fact, the word qualification is probably not a right word. Who, who, how is anybody going to measure the qualification? At least in these degrees, there is some exams we write and we get graded and all that and finally we get some pass marks and all and finally we get a degree. So there is some 
there is some way to quantify all this and even there we know the limitations even there some of the greatest people scientists have failed in many exams ramanujam was bored in all the math classes and uh, and so he failed in some of the exams also like he is a great scientist and you tell him you have to do a masters you have to do a phd and all that this mind doesn't think like that he is already solving problems in his mind by the time you have told him you have to do a phd he has solved two theorems in his mind so <laughs> this whole system doesn't work for him so so we don't take everything too literally but clearly there is a need for for preparation and uh, we also saw that earlier pariksha lokan karma chitan briefly we quoted that that verse from mundaka upanishad where it says pariksha lokan this person has examined his or her experiences in life a life where there is constantly something to be done and to be accomplished and that person has recognized that uh, what i seek in this kind of a life can never be completely fulfilling to me i can never be completely adequate nasti akritah krite na i am full i am i am an embodiment of ananda that ananda cannot be created by something nasti akritah krite na that completeness that fullness cannot be a result of karma cannot be a result of action because action is finite i am not looking for finite the result of any finite action is always finite and so this this fullness i am seeking cannot be a result of action result of karma so we saw that before same thing here also <clears throat> and so that so there that verse says pariksha lokan that person has analyzed his or her experiences nirveda mayat remember we used the shastra uses the word brahmana there brahmana so who is a brahmana the person who has analyzed one's experiences like this and gained some dispassion nirvedam ayat dispassion so we can add the word dispassion to this maturity dispassion and he is going to talk about dispassion again later so such a person so same preparedness same sadhana chatushtaya sampanna was there in the upanishad here he is using the word sadhana chatushtaya the upanishad does, does not use the word sadhana chatushtayam but elsewhere it talks about these things so same topic same prerequisites here also in tattvavoda okay so what we will do is we will chant the next uh, next uh, couple of lines here so i have uh, unmuted mahesh ji <coughs> repeat after me sadhana chatushtayam kim sadhana chatushtayam kim nitya nitya vastu vivekah nitya nitya vastu vivekah इहा मुद्रार्थ इहा मुद्रार्थ फल भोग फल भोग विराग विराग क्षमादि क्षमादि षट्क संपत्ति ही षट्क संपत्ति ही मुमुक्षुत्वम मुमुक्षुत्वम चेति चेति so here we can we were beginning to see the author's style of teaching so he is the she is i'm going to use the word she for her she is using a question answer type of approach 
So she's taking on the role of a student. You should imagine a student. And the student is asking the question. Based on what the author said earlier, what did, what did she say? Sadhana chatushtaya sampanna adhikari nam. So now the student is saying, wait a minute. What is sadhana chatushtaya sampannam? So you use that word. I don't understand that word. So he says sadhana chatushtaya sampannam kim chatushtayam kim. So the answer is given. Nitya nitya vastu vivekaha. So vivekaha. Viragaha. Fourth one is shamadi shakka sampattihi. Means a six-fold qualifications, starting with the qualification Shama. And fourth one is Mumukshutvam. So four qualifications are giving. Mumukshutvam means A, an intense desire for Moksha, desire to be free. These are the four qualifications. Called Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampattihi. So, which we can start in the next class and we can begin to understand that. So, we will actually, uh, we will conclude the class with a prayer now and then we will have a satsang. <clears throat> Om Swasti Prajabhya Paripalayantam Nyayena Margena Mahi Mahisha Go Brahmane Peshubhamastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Kale Bashatu Parjanyaha Prithuvi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshobharahitaha Brahmana Santu Nirbhaya Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadra Nipashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhagbavet Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotirgamaya Mrityor Ma Amritangamaya Om Pur Namadaf Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachyade Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Okay, so today, uh, was I uh, reasonably audible? Okay, good. So still recording. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. If you have any questions, we can address that. Yeah. Hara Prasad ji. Uh, where did the word, where did you use the word she? <laughs> Why did you word the, the she? Uh, just like that, just came to me and... Uh, um, but, the the author, author, but the author is he. Who is the author? Arapasadji, what is the name of the author? Uh, Govinda Chaya? No. Uh, I knew the author's name. So are you, ha are you, are you having a book which actually talks of, uh, writes in the beginning the author's yes. name? Is that yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, that's that's good to know and uh, and. Uh, you know, we, yeah, so there are different opinions on the author and we, some, some people say Adi Shankaracharya wrote it, some people say another Shankaracharya wrote it 
and you have mentioned the word uh, <clears throat> Govinda Acharya. So since we don't know for sure who wrote it yet, there is that's that's how that's how I've heard from our my Guruji. So I just use the word she okay. just to just to just to highlight the fact that uh, it is possible for anybody to write a book like this and it could have been a she also could have, could have been a lady also woman also that's all no particular reason okay so i i i i, st I still don't know who the author is but uh, if you can uh, if you can tell me later on the name of the book i mean the name of the publication and uh, and the author's name uh, does it say govinda acharya i thought so okay so if you go ahead and confirm it no need to confirm it now but later on, uh, confirm it. Tell me which book it is, and uh, we can look it up. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I have to ask one question, Surendra. Yeah. Actually, I wrote to you. It was uh, basically one uh, topic about Atma Buddha. I attended one uh, discourse by Swami Parthasarthi, and it was on the subject of Atma Buddha. Uh, we are now studying Tattva Bodha. Basically, Atma Bodha means study of self within. And Tattva Bodha, as you said, is study of the truth or reality. They both appear same. So my question was, what is the salient difference between the two? What exactly I will get? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question. And uh, so, yeah. So the subject matter of the two books is the same. The way of presenting is different. We will see slowly in Tattva Bodha. A lot of these words like this will be clarified. That's how the teaching will happen. One after the other words. Atma Bodha presentation is different. There is a particular methodology used. And it will talk like the introduction to Vedanta we had. We'll talk about limitations of samsara, etc. And then it'll introduce the topic of Atma Vidya. Like that, it goes in a in a in a it's it's a it's a verse form. I think Atma Bodha, I studied it long ago. Um, what is it? The way it starts is uh, uh, Tapo bhikshi, tapo bhikshi na papa naam, shanta naam, vita ragi naam. Like that he goes. There also he explains what is the subject and what who is the who is the audience for that. So yeah, so there also the subject matter is the same, but there the approach will be different. And so-called technical words presented, panchakosha and all it not it may it won't talk about. So it need not talk about all the every technical word found in Vedanta, every book need not talk about. Okay, Number one. Number two, algebra is a subject. Algebra. Hey, how many books are there in algebra? So, many books are there. Thousands and thousands. If you start counting, it may be, it may hard, be hard to count also. You also can write a book on algebra. Today's books are a little different from the books we studied. I think I think we all recognize that. Today's book have a lot of color in it. A lot of pictures are there. A lot of uh, sidebars with Q and A will be there. All this funny, nice little attractive attractive uh, presentations are there. And so a different way of presenting the same algebra. More examples are given. Those days our teachers used to simply write and move on to the next one. And nobody explained to me what is the application of algebra, geometry or trigonometry, sine square theta, all these things. Iska fayda kya hai? Nobody taught me. Simply we studied, we memorized, we wrote, we passed and we are here today. So, so different way of presenting can be there. So, so no problem. So our Shastra also. It's like that. 
so uh, they have written books like that and uh, always a different way of presenting things so nothing wrong with atma bodhan talking about the same topic two different books yeah any other uh, question okay so so this is how the classes will be typically when swami ji teaches you won't find a rush to finish the course you know the rush you know there are so many verses in tatva bodha and i want to finish it in one week i want to finish it in one month this kind of thinking will not be there so some of you may get a thought you know at this rate how many weeks it can be how many months it can be like these thoughts you know it may have this is my suggestion to you do you want speed or do you want clarity this is what we have to ask and uh, if speed is there clarity can suffer if clarity is there speed is not relevant so that's the way the approach is and so i like to follow that same technique and every word is pregnant with meaning and uh, so we like to unfold that and so so as we as the teaching goes along we learn more than tatva bodha also we learn the way our rishis have been thinking the way these sanskrit words are formed the way they use these words why a particular word is used why some other word is not used like this everything is we all begin to learn so so that's the approach i just wanted to clarify that so there is no need to have another worry stress you know life we have so much stress and another stress is there oh i started attending a class and it's going very slowly and after so many weeks he is just come to the second verse of tatva bodha what only second verse so this kind of relax can be there so don't worry about all that we will just just relax and uh, uh it will work really well i just wanted to give that assurance to all of you <laughs> okay yeah mahesh ji is saying clarity is more important than speed we are not chasing a target date of completion yeah Absolutely. yeah so that's another problem sometimes i have this problem too somebody ask me uh when are you going to finish this course yeah i suppose uh, it's it's nice to have a target you know sometimes having no target is also not not good you know we all you know we need to have a target date uh, and the tobada is a small text so so yeah so correct there is no fixed target date and uh, so it will take it will take some months so probably 3 4 months 5 months it can take so hopefully all of us can uh, share that journey throughout okay yes sounds good all right there are no other questions we will uh, conclude now